All right, ladies and gentlemen, I know your time is precious. Thank you all so much for joining us today. We've got a very exciting lunch and learn session planned. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Woodrow Wilson Wagner, and it's my privilege to serve as Director of Institution Programs here at the University of Houston, Victoria. And part of my responsibilities is to manage our faculty development. And for those of us who have joined our sessions before, thanks for coming back. For those of you who've never joined our sessions, thanks for coming, and we hope you come again. We try to have sessions that accommodate both faculty and staff and sometimes students. Certainly the content today I think is beneficial to both faculty and staff alike, whether you're teaching an online class, whether you're a staff member trying to find a better way to conduct meetings virtually with folks in Katy and online and here in Victoria. I think the content is going to be extremely useful for all those audiences. And we certainly have then students who are wanting to be teachers as well, who Dr. Lemansky and Dr. Eugene have been working with and many of us on the call have been working with, and they might find some use in all of this as well. We're trying to expand our participant base in these activities, including people from the Victoria Independent School District and including folks from Victoria College. So my hope as we go on in the next few weeks and months, we'll get to meet more colleagues, not just from our own places and our own units, but from some of these other places as well. And I think what we're going to discover is all of us, whether we work for VISD, UHV or VC, have some very common goals. And it's a great opportunity to share these best practices with everybody here in our community. So I just wanna again, thank all of you for joining us. I know you've got very busy schedules, whether you're in Katy, whether you're online, whether you're here in Victoria, thanks for making this time for us. I'm doing a little bit of stalling because one of our featured presenters is still trying to find her way to the campus. And so <laughs> she's gonna hopefully be parking very, very soon and joining us, Dr. Nicole Eugene. But I'll go ahead and get things started by introducing one of our featured presenters. Many of you know her already, Dr. Melanie Lemansky. And Dr. Lemansky, if you don't know, has been doing some really terrific things in the online teaching environment, specifically finding new ways to engage students in that environment, which is sometimes a challenge, especially if you have asynchronous courses, especially if you have students that you never see. And she's developed some techniques that I think are not only useful in the classroom, but can be useful to those of us who are staff and administrators in terms of doing virtual meetings with people from afar. Many of us on this call, whether we be staff or administrators or faculty, are working with people in Katy or working with people at other online places. So I think some of the things she'll be sharing with us are going to hopefully be relevant to all of that. So Dr. Lemansky in a little bit will share some of her thoughts and then Dr. Eugene will come in and get more specific about using this technology called FLIP. And some of you have been using FLIP already. Some of you have never heard of FLIP, but this is going to be a great opportunity to hear from two really outstanding University of Houston Victoria professors and how they've used this technology to engage students, and colleagues and folks from all over. So Dr. Eugene's gonna set up her things for a few minutes and get her PowerPoints and all that ready. So I'm gonna turn to Dr. Lemansky. And Dr. Lemansky, if you can tell us a little bit about some of the challenges of engaging folks in that online environment, especially if you're asynchronous, especially if you're not seeing them, and why you found in your classroom things like flip to be helpful. And Dr. Lemansky as a bonus is also gonna tell us how we can use Canvas. I know Victoria College 
and UHV, and I think it, even some degree uh, VISD, uh, might be using Canvas. So this is, I think, a great, great plus for us that Dr. Lemansky can share those best practices. But Dr. Lemansky, if you can just kind of talk about a little bit of the philosophy behind this and the challenges that you face and how you found this technology to transcend some of those challenges. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Melanie <laughs> Lemansky. Thank you. Thank, I feel like like that was a big uh, introduction for, and then I feel like I don't have that much to say, but that's okay. I'm sure I have no, plenty sure. to say. Um, so I am Dr. Melanie Lemansky. I am an assistant professor in our school psychology program. It's a graduate um, program training um, professionals to go out in the field and be school psychologists. Um, I, I, this is actually, I am a school psychologist by practice. I have been, this might yeah, starting my 18th year of being a school psychologist. So I worked in a school district before I came to the university. Um, and in our program and also in our undergraduate program, we um, have a significant number of our classes that are online. Um, online. Most of them are online asynchronous, so the class doesn't meet on a regular basis. And one of the things when I started teaching these types of classes, um, that I noticed is that there wasn't a lot of interaction between students. Um, there wasn't, uh, students didn't feel like they belonged, like they were connected to each other. Um, and I think that's a really important um, pedagogy uh, strategy is to have that connectedness, that feeling of you are part of this class, you belong, you, you are important to the class, that you're not just a passive, um, participant that you're actively participating. Um, so I started looking for technology um, that would help me build some of that um, in my classes, in both my graduate and some of the undergraduate classes that I've taught. Um, and um, initially we were using Blackboard, UHV was using Blackboard. Uh, I did not feel like Blackboard had this same accessibility to use technology, um, videos in particular. Um, so I started using Flip at, uh, as the technology um, piece for getting students to post videos um, of themselves, introducing each other at the beginning of the semester because, you know, they're all online. They don't necessarily know each other. Um, and, um, and we we utilize also in some of my graduate classes, we utilize video also for um performance. Uh, so we watch students doing different skills uh, and use those, but we've used different technology for that. Now that we've moved to Canvas, I actually at the beginning of the semester, I moved away from using Flip um, because I figured out that I could get the same thing that I was doing with Flip through Canvas. Uh, without having to direct students, one of the you know one of the issues that I faced with using Flip is that Flip and Canvas or Flip and Blackboard at the time didn't communicate with each other. Um, so um, I have started to use uh, Canvas for the introductory videos, video assignments, and found that that is just as useful and just as easy as using Flip. So. Um, Anyway, that's my my spiel about how I use these. I, I I'm I don't know where where Nicole is if she wants to jump in. If you want me to show, I'm I have resources to share and show with people. So let me know. <laughs> uh, Melanie, if you wouldn't mind sharing some of those resources, and I okay. know specifically when it comes to Canvas, you have created some guides or some help, and I think that would right. be of great interest. And however you want to do that, uh, you can certainly share your screen or okay. put things okay. in the chat, whatever is right. easiest. By the way, so, folks, uh, we can email everything to you afterwards. Um, so if you miss anything or don't get any of these links, but it looks like Dr. Lemansky sharing her screen now. Hopefully everybody's seen that. Go ahead, okay. Dr. Lemansky. 
so I just wanted to give you an example, and, and Nicole might have something similar that she wants to show you, but this is an example when I was using FLIP. Um, this is one of my undergraduate courses, and basically at the beginning of the semester, I just asked the students to upload a short video to introduce themselves. I always upload a video, uh, you know, telling them who I am, why I'm here, you know, what I'm all about. Um, and they are able to do this. Usually I, I typically give them extra credit for doing this, um, so it's not a mandatory thing, but I find that a lot of students um, want to participate, want to get that connection with each other. Um, so this is how um, I did it in the past with FLIP. I would just have like a little short introduction, and you can see down here, I won't show you all those um, for FERPA reasons. Oh, I, I just lost my screen. Um, but um, they, the students are able to basically just go here, record a short video introducing themselves, and then they can all watch um, each other's videos um, through the FLIP platform. And you can see I, I did it in several different courses across the semester um, to have the, those videos. Um, but again, what I found is that you can actually do that same um, thing through Canvas. And so this semester in one of my courses, I had the same thing where they introduced themselves. This is an online asynchronous graduate course. Um, and um, I had them all um, make videos. And um, I built into, um, there's sort of in Canvas, there's actually two different ways um, that you can do this. If you have discussion boards, which I do in this class, I built it as the first discussion board for the semester. Um, and so, and then the students are able to um, see each other's responses. Um, and, but you can also do video assignments. So those, and those are where students are giving you um, video responses um, to, instead of a written response or, um, you know, I don't know, I, most of the responses would be video, but are written, but they can actually produce a video response to an, an assignment rather than um, a written response. So um, th these instructions that I gave you basically walk you through how to do it if you want to do it as a discussion board. My intention this morning was to make a separate handout for because the process is slightly different for doing it as an assignment. And then I ended up putting out fires all morning. So, <laughs> so I didn't actually get a chance to do a handout on um, how to do it for assignments, um, but I, I um, will do that and we can send that out as well. Um, but I was I was just going to show you really quickly um, on here as an assignment. Um, basically, if you just hit on the assignment um, tab over here in, when you're in Canvas, and let's see if I can scroll down. You would add, you would do the assignment plus here where you're adding in the information as an assignment. So you would name it, you could give the description, how whatever your description is. Um, the big thing is um, if you're going to have it as an assignment, you want to have uh, it listed here as an assignment. And then this box really tells you it, it ha you have to check this media recording. Um, box that is telling the students that is the format you want them to give their responses in. If it was click text, then they would only be able to give you a written response. But if they are going to do um, a recording, you have to hit that. And then you can always decide if you how many attempts you want to give them. Do you want to give them one? Do you want to give them multiple? I always give them multiple because people hate recording their videos. And then if they find a mistake, <laughs> <laughs> they like to be able to re-record, so I always give them um, the option of doing it. But then basically, if you just uh, save and publish that, students are um, able to um, produce short video responses to you. Um, the one um, feedback, the one, I don't know if feedback is the right word, the one caveat that I would give you for using Canvas is that we discovered because um, the videos that I do with my graduate students where they're performing um, a different uh, psychological test for me, 
um, those tend to be very long. They, they're sometimes two hours, three hour long videos. Um, Canvas doesn't have the um, capability of doing long videos. Um, the, the, the students, for us as instructors creating videos, we can have longer videos. But for the students, it's about five minutes um, that they can have um, their videos. Um, and so that is uh, one of the limitations. So if you wanted them to produce a, you know, a big long video that this is probably not the best technology. I don't know, Nicole might know what the um, parameters are on a flip video, how long those can be. Uh, that, but that's gonna be my question. It's like, does flip have those limitations in terms of how long a student video can be? Yeah, I mean, of course, they're not going to allow a three hour video, right. <laughs> but but whether I I think it might be like a half an hour. Oh, OK, maybe. so it's more than five. Minutes. Yeah, <laughs> OK, all right. Um. I don't know if uh, I don't know if anybody has a, any questions about that, but like like I said, I I found it very useful in um, the discussion. So you can see like the um, students. Let's see, did I lose it? Oh, it's this one. Um, the students all responded. I have so and they are able to see each other's little videos. So you can see my my video, and then each of the students produced a video. Uh, in response, and then they are all, you know, these are all first year graduate students. They haven't really gotten to know each other yet, so they're allowed to see each other's videos on there. If you do it as an assignment, though, they cannot see each other's videos. So it's only if you do it as a discussion. I saw a hand going up in the back. So I had a so I had a question about that. So in Flip, we can do thirty minute videos. It's but, ten minutes. Oh, so like I had ten to look minutes. It up. But yeah. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, but the do students have the ability to embed a flip video uh, in Canvas like that, kind of like what you have there. So you can do it as somebody who has access to code and knows knows how to do HTML. But HTML I don't think embedding. the students. Yeah. Like, maybe if they are in computer science, but because yeah. HTML is not hard, you just copy and paste. <laughs> you just copy and paste it. I think no. I, th I, th I think some software, including YouTube now, when you do share, you, you have an option. Yeah, you just like yeah exactly. Copy paste exactly. 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 So yeah, you can. But yeah, it is. It does embed. Yeah. But as the instructor, okay. Let's see. All right. I I do think that if you set up your um, video assignment as a you know a video assignment I do think there is a way for students to not have to record through canvas and they can just upload a video I, I believe that's an option too but again I don't know like what the point I haven't done that yet I've only had them actually use canvas to record the video and up uh, and send it as their assignment. So Melanie, whether you're using Flip or whether you're using Canvas in this new way, what kind of feedback do you get from students in terms of does this enhance the online class experience for them? Does it make a difference? Do they care? Because again, yeah. we're, we're trying to find new ways to engage because the thought is if we engage our students more, we're going to hopefully retain them more. They're going to want to keep coming back, right? So what, what are you finding, Melanie? Yeah, I, I would say that I do get feedback both on um, my um, course evaluations and then I have done separate evaluations of some of the software that I have used. And in both cases, students repeatedly say they feel more connected to the online classes when there are components like this, um, when there are video uh, assignments where they're able to interact. So I, I actually use another software, which is a whole other um, talk called Perusal, where they all read um, the textbook together and they comment back and forth to each other on the textbook. Um, and um, they really feel like that helps build like connection to each other. And they actually like know the other students. They may not, not you know, if they were walking down the street, they might not necessarily know each other, but at least they start to get a feeling for each other um, and feel like, you know, even though I'm, at my own computer in my own house doing this class, I have built some relationship with it within the class. And I, I think it's a really important thing um, to bring to those types of classes so students don't feel I'm just isolated at my house <laughs> doing this. 
Th that's a great word, Melanie. And I think that's part of the UHV brand relationships. We build relationships. We have smaller classes. We have students having the opportunity to interact with their faculty more. But at the end of the day, I think that's one of the things when we're talking about strategic plan and all these other big institutional things. It's those relationships that bring the students back, that want them coming back for more. And even in online, we, we, we can do that. And I think Melanie, you've given us some, some great, great tips. I know Melanie would be more than happy to follow up with you. She's gonna develop more uh, guides and things like that. And we can, we can share those with the university community, but what a tremendous resource, Melanie. Thank you so much. And that next thing we can talk about that that other thing you're talking. We can do a whole session on that, right? So yeah, I would I would be very right happy. Ones. I'd I'd love to do a, a lunch and learn about um, using Perusal. Um, Sandy Veneman, who's another assistant uh, professor in, in in psychology, and I actually published an article on the use of Perusal um, in uh, undergraduate psychology courses. Um, and I, I think it's a fantastic tool. Um, I'd love, I, it does not integrate with um, a Canvas, which is one of my goals in my life is to get it to integrate with Canvas. Um, IT and I don't always agree about whether things should integrate or not. So, <laughs> but I, I have to, I push, I push for things, so. All right, well, Melanie, thank you so much. Any just quick questions for Melanie? We'll have more time for questions at the end, but before we go to Dr. Eugene, and she's going to get more into grid itself, and not just for faculty, but for staff too. But any questions for Melanie while we have her here? In the room or online, you can just raise your hand or type it in the chat. Oh, good. All right, we'll have an opportunity. Melanie's not going anywhere. She'll she'll be around. Yeah. Um, but I want to turn it over to now our colleague, Dr. Nicole Eugene from the Department of Communication. And she has found such value in using this tool, Flip. And if you haven't heard about Flip, it used to be called Flipgrid. If you looked at the invite for this very session, there was an introductory video and some other information there for you. But I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Dr. Eugene, and she's going to talk about FLIP, not just for faculty purposes. I know we have a lot of staff and a lot of admin on the call, too, who are thinking, OK, well, what's in it for me? Is this technology something that I could use or I could uh, share with folks? So without further ado, there she is, Dr. Nicole Eugene. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I thought I'd skip through it to like which one <laughs> that would be totally distracting. I was like for a little while I was entertaining it, but <laughs> the so I am um, we'll start off like just letting you know I teach communication classes. I trained to teach online before I actually taught a class online at Ohio University where they have a communication college and they use a video discussion platform for all of the communication classes. So while they may have you know, the discussion boards where it's just text, but um, the video exchange and students talking about what they're learning is, is the norm. That, and that's the norm that I brought here when I came to, to UHV and started to to want to teach online. And so I um, asked Bev Herrick, who was our, our um, educational um, technology extraordinaire, about it. And she introduced me to Flip and told me that it's essentially the same thing. And it's free, so the university doesn't have to pay for it. And it is really easy to use. And there are a lot of people who are liking it. And so I haven't taught an asynchronous online class without having seen my students without them connecting with me and with each other and i've had a lot of positive feedback about about using flip i teach courses like intercultural communication and group communication and these are courses where who you are and it, it impacts you know how we respond to to what you're saying and and um and it's really important to get to know your group members 
all outside of just what they type, right? And so being able to to really get to know each other is um, it really helps the students do well in the class and connect. I also want to say that this is kind of the TikTok era, and so these using video is something that in is the short format it increases engagement with students and it makes the classes more enjoyable. It does allow them to, to play with the videos in terms of having creative components. And um, I really value being able to see students' faces because I can see them at graduation. I could see, run into them at UHB. And I also have, there are also times when there's videos where you have a, um, where my cat will will do a cameo. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to know other people's pets and other people's. <laughs> Nicole, you weren't you weren't in the room yet, but my dog already had a, a mini mini um, uh, cameo in today's. Uh... Anyway, yeah. sorry, I had to throw that in there. It makes it real. It makes it, like it personable, and it, it really helps students with with um, connecting with you and I at each semester I teach group communication I have students uh, identify problems that they want to focus on and, and address and each each semester it's there's students they're like this is isolation thing that I'm experiencing as an online student I'd like to fix it I'd like to to address it and the flip um, you know as a platform it, it does help help that and um, one the very first time the students did that they did suggest like oh well you know us having like these group projects and doing these with groups is part of the solution and um, and so I do think that it, it does in, increase the the quality of, of students engagement and and of their experiences of the club courses in general but um, so I'll I'll <coughs> go over um, some things, feel free to ask questions. Um, but I also am going to see if we have student feedback because there's a point when I will, because um, I've taught you know, this previously and I'll, I'll want to check to see if, if there are people who have, who have, um, who have experience with FLIP, who'd like to share you know, their feedback. But, uh, but to get started, some of the objectives that I uh, that FLIP can be used for uh, and also staff can be used for is when it comes to increasing oral proficiency. If you want your staff members or students to be comfortable and be confident in communicating about specific topics, having them create FLIP videos are a great opportunity to have them reach, reach those objectives. If you also have objectives that involve language like to discuss, to apply, to analyze, to evaluate or critique, these are also things that you're able to, to accomplish with using the FLIP platform and these video discussions. And I also, because I teach human communication courses where students are able to apply concepts to communication artifacts or personal life, is allow students to to share about themselves and their and their backgrounds and, and their experiences with the concepts that we've talked about. So, for example, um, we do have a lot of online students who come with a lot of work experience, who come with a lot of life experience, and so they they have a lot to share when it comes to some of the topics that that I'm able to, to that we touch on in communication classes, and so so students are really able to help help each other learn by connecting these course concepts to their own lives, and it provides additional examples. Um, so. I also want to just go over the different types of assignments that I use, um, that a Flipgrid can be used for. As Melanie discussed, the introductions are, are really crucial for getting the semester started on a positive foot and helping create the sense of a classroom and build, build connections. I have it as an assignment. And I also 
would um, use group discussion boards so that students are not talking to all 40 people or however many students are in the class, but they're talking to seven people. And with the flip, I tell them, you know, who's in your group? And I, I tell them also like, hey, these are your group members. Go watch their video. Go get to know them so that because when you're tech, when you're just writing, reading their, their text responses, you have that background, you have that sense of like, oh yeah, I remember she's, she's a young mom that, or she also works in healthcare and I work in healthcare and you're able to really have a, a stronger connection with their, with students that way that carries throughout the semester. Um, and, and so that's part of how I, I use FLIP and they do that. A lot of students, um, I also require them to do replies and that's 20% of the grade, but I always have maybe 15% um, or 20% who just go way beyond on the replies and they just reply to like 10 students or six students because it just, it feels good to feel, get that affirmation, to, to feel like you're, you're heard and, and there's plenty of students who like to, to do that and, and it just takes a moment to, to reply to people. Um, and so I also just for a second, sorry, uh -huh. I just I was just going to add two two quick things that I heard when you were um, uh, talking one I on Canvas as well, you actually are able to, if you set it up as a video discussion, you it does not have to be a whole class discussion. Um, I have always set them up that way, but you can actually break students into smaller groups. So if you have like 70 students in your class, you could do groups of five or groups of 10 or whatever you want to do. So just um, that I wanted people to be aware that Canvas has that option as well. Um, the other thing, there was something else you said and now I've forgotten what what the other thing is ah it's a oh about the feedback like, uh, like uh, that's another thing that I've noticed that students really love to do is respond to each other like a lot of times in written discussion I find that there's not a lot of back and forth between students but when we do these video responses students are like hi oh I you know I work in such and such too or I you know like they make connections between each other um, and I've noticed a lot more of that on videos than on written responses so anyway those were my two um, quick uh, add-ins yeah, no, thank you. Because uh, because that is that is essential, um, and it does it does chip away at that sense of isolation. Um, I also do have um, assignments where it is just similar to a discussion board question in which they are asked to to address the content and and talk about that. There. Um, but but still, I, it's always best to have some kind of like personal connection because you don't want them have creating videos where they feel like they should read their <laughs> response. You want them to be able to talk from their own own experiences and and to show fluency in in discussing the contents. And so having it having them talk about things that are personal will will help help with that. But you're able to to scaffold you know, other kinds of assignments if, when it comes to like the presentations um, and, you know, that, that's that's another way I use it. They can also be used for oral exams for within the languages. Um, so I use this in in uh, my my professional speaking class. It is how the students will present. You're able to include the visual aids and you're able to uh, really, you know, on any uh, class or, or program is able to have students do presentations like this and, and they're able to reply to each other and see each other's work in, in this kind of format um, with because there's a 10 minute limit. So I also have them do reaction videos uh, I when they when they watch a documentary, you know, so you're able to see their their response and like you know, sometimes it's an emotional response and you seeing that, seeing the emotional response is really different from just like the, the text, mm. like what, oh, I was emotional. No, no. It's, you get to see like what, what the documentary, you know, how it, 
it challenged them or how how they felt about it and that that does in, enrich like, your understanding of your your students and and each other's understanding of of, of the content so um there's also um I, what i'm doing for, for the first time this semester is reviewing creating an assignment where the week where we have an exam there asked to to make connections to the content and talk about applying these ideas to their lives so as a way to help other students review so that so that they're they're helping each other and they're also going to be able to ask questions that other students are able to answer and um, what, I, what I what I have as a demonstration is a, is the mini presentation. So many classes will have a major assignment that's due at the end of the semester, but the students are mostly present giving this to you as the professor. But I like using Flip as this opportunity to give the assignment to the whole class, so this, if the students can each see what each other decided to write about and what they decided to to talk about and this also creates a lot of uh, more transparency because for intercultural communication class when i first came here there were people who were who they had to uh, i have to ask them i mean i asked them to get to know another culture i mean throughout the semester but there's people who were like didn't want to do that and and uh but that that ability to like fake a paper and fake like what you're doing it it's much harder if you're you having you're having to talk about this with the whole class and you're you're also sharing what's what's going on with the whole class um there's also other dynamics that i think are are good about about this but essentially you know the end of this all of their work you know that they put into their final assignment they're able to share it with the class and, and the students are able to benefit from, from seeing what other other students decided to to research or decided to to write about. So um sorry. I I'm gonna come back to the grading. I'm gonna oh actually no, I skipped a slide. That's what happened. No, where's the slide for the sorry? I'm make there it is. Yeah, the example one. All right, so I'm going to show you the examples and then we'll talk about the grading um, options. But but in my COM 4314, they have the persistent observation paper. And I asked students because I you know uh, was invited to do this in the in the spring, my my one is spring class, if they give me permission to to share some of the videos here and also in my dossier. So, so I've gotten permission from these students to be able to share share these these with you. Now, I think let me see. We're going to see how the sound ends up working, but because the sound from my computer is probably not going to translate. When you did um, the share, did you say share audio? Oh, I mean, I don't have the audio. Let me see. As long as you shared the audio, it should work. OK. Oh, sorry, this is the wrong screen. But this is what it looks like embedded in in uh, Canvas. And you would log in. Um, have, and it was similar with um, students. I would have them. I'd have them use the you their Microsoft ID to log in and and they would see. Um, but that's just the HTML you, you copy and paste it into there, but. No, I keep going the wrong way, sorry. It's the, I separated them out thinking it will be. Much easier to find the window. I think it's this one. Yes. These are the example videos. And so you have a background, and these are, I copied and these from the course. And so it has information about, you know, these are, I want you, what I want them to talk about and ask them to reply. 
and so these are the students that that um, that allow me to share their videos. So we can go ahead and share. Hi everyone. I want to share a little bit about my experience. Okay. So there's back. So if you turn your audio off, like just mute your speakers, yeah, should be okay. With the observation paper, I had the opportunity to spend time with the Kuhn's family. They're a white religious family in South Texas, and South Texas is known by having lots of Mexican people, especially in the border, which uh, I live in Laredo, Texas. I am not from Laredo, Texas, so I know many, many difference about the South of Mexico, South of Texas, and then the rest of the US or the rest of Texas. They are from Ryan, Texas. They have six kids. They are really white and really religious. Uh, one of the experiences that I want to share with you all, especially, is the, how they see God in their, life, in their lives. I'm not a religion follower as much. I do believe, but not as much. But what I what I left their house with it was that God works in different in different ways. Not like how I was taught in Mexico that if you do something wrong, you go to hell and it's punishment, punishment, punishment. It's more that it's everywhere. It's always if you give them if you give him access to your life and to your, your every journey that you have that you have, uh, he's gonna be by your side, blessing you and giving you the tools, keeping you away from whatever is not for you and keep, um, in order to get to what it's meant to be for you. Uh, that was something that stayed with me. Uh, well, their family is beautiful. They have six kids. The, you never get tired in that house because everybody is like, all of their kids are under 12 years old. So they're either fighting, playing, always have something to say. Um, well, it's something that I would like to look forward in my, in my future have a nice family, include God in my in my life. Um, well, have kids also, maybe not that many, but how they raise them, I really liked it. And well, that's pretty much it. Uh, have a Jaguar day, everybody. Ciao. Okay, um, so that so that's just one example. Um, another example that I wanted to share is approaches to, to talking about what, what they've learned and what they what they decided to share with the class. But um, but that's that's an example. Um, maybe if we have time in the end I can I can come back to this. But but the next thing I wanted to do is just address this question of of the grading and so there's different options when it comes to to grading because you're able it it somewhat embeds into canvas when you copy and paste the html code in there but there's not a direct um grade book connection you can give feedback on flip but you can also give back the feedback on canvas and uh, when you watch the students, you can watch them the same way students will watch each other, and that's always great. But I also want to be able to grade them, and I um, do the feedback online, so on the, on Canvas. But you're able to one of the things that makes grading faster is you're able to increase the speed the of, of the of the videos so that you're able to hear them and you can type while you're while you're doing that and that that will speed up because you know if you, you can create like a three minute or two and a half minute that can that can add up but the speed you you can increase the audio if you wanted to 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 be able to go through go through the grading process a little faster i also download an excel form for each of the uh discussion boards and it includes everybody and you who, who's submitted and so that I'm able to see how many replies each people have and they also have a transcription of of each of the of the of the videos and so you're able to 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 in, read read them if, if that's something that you prefer to to give them feedback on based off of that 
Um, but as I think I mentioned previously, I about 20% of the grade is for replies. And I try to include like a minimum time length because sometimes students, there's always somebody who's just like, okay, I'll do it. But they didn't, they didn't <laughs> prep for it for the video and they didn't really get that far. So, so that, so otherwise it's a really easy thing to grade because most people, they can make the one minute time limit with, they, they just, you know, put a little thought into it. And, um, I, I don't want to penalize people too much if they don't have the time to do the replies, but the replies are really a really good aspect of it. Um, so next. Um, I wanted to bring up the topic of how what students think of FLIP and I like Melanie, you know, have heard a lot of positive things about FLIP and um, on the student feedback and I've also had students who have graduated and who have talked about FLIP and in this way that it, it really stays with them because it's something that they really remember and really appreciate it because the contrast of just the, you know, not knowing anybody in the class and just reading their posts, it's, it's really dramatic, but it's also um, really helps them feel feel connected to, to the class and, and to feel heard. I um, also want to open it up to see if there are people in the room or in the um, <coughs> Uh, online who have used flip and would like to share what your experiences are what you thought about flip yeah so anyone online if you've used flip if you'd like to raise your hand or just let us know come on the screen and chat anybody here in the room have you all used flip no okay i have not uh nadia has nadia would you mind talking about your experience with that. There she is. Hey, hey, so I don't have, I really don't have too much to say beyond what you guys have already said. Um, the, it's possible, it's totally possible that I appreciate Flipgrid more than the students do because, you know, I, I, I really struggle in, with teaching online and not getting that kind of, you know, dialogue and feedback from students and not knowing what they look like and not knowing how they present themselves and not knowing how they who they are as people and uh, I have used Flipgrid I use Flipgrid a lot in the pandemic and this I got mixed re reactions from the students, but this is all just totally impressionistic and anecdotal. Like some people felt that it was more trouble than it was worth. Uh, I used Flipgrid in the one graduate class that I taught and the, they hated it. They felt like this is baby stuff. But again, an it's anecdotal and maybe I'm just summarizing the views of just a couple people. So anyway, I'm all in favor. I think it humanizes things and warms things up and yeah, everything I like, that. I like the point you make, Nadia. It's not just for the students' benefit, but it's for our benefit. Because that's one of the most challenging things I have when I teach online is like, how is this stuff resonating? Is it resonating? What are they? <laughs> What are they thinking beyond the sentences they're typing, right? If you can just get a little bit of affect, right? If you can just get a little bit of feeling, then that tells me like, okay, I'm going the right direction or I'm not going the right direction, right? But I love that. And maybe Nadia better for undergrad than grad. I don't know if Nicole and uh, Melanie, if y'all have seen that difference that for your grad classes, maybe not so much, but for grad it does. I, I don't know. What, what are your thoughts, Melanie? I, uh, in my grad classes, I've only used FLIP for the introduction. Um, I haven't used it for an assignment. Um, we do, like I said, I do use videos for um, assessment of their uh, skills as um, testers, psychological testers, examiners. Um, and I mean, I think it's, invaluable in terms of being able to give them 
minute by minute feedback on doing that kind of thing. And I've never had any students like say, I hate it. I don't want to do it. Like I, it, it's, it's the only way I can watch six, eight, 10 students doing these kinds of skills um, and being able to see whether they're doing it correctly or not. Um, so, you know, otherwise we'd have to spend literally hours uh, on campus somewhere, me watching them do these, these things. So I have not experienced student pushback from students, uh, uh, graduate students doing it. And I, and I guess it's subject specific because in Melanie's case, you're describing students having to demonstrate a behavior or skill set and you've got to make sure that they're doing it right kind of thing and there's only one way to do that which is to like see it kind of thing it can't just be something typed in a chat so for other classes it, it might be different any other experiences using flip we're, we're coming up on our hour here we got about seven minutes or so but brooke garcia go ahead hi i've got like I have a weird angle there. I was like little head, at least on my screen. Anyway, um, so yeah, I used it, but only for introductions too. And it didn't go so well, but I think it was my user error. Like I didn't give the good directions, like what Melanie was giving and things like that. I was like, hey, check out Flipgrid. And so, yeah, it, it didn't go so well, but now um, we're doing more real time online type things. And so I feel like we're having a lot more interaction on, with the online classes. Plus, I always put them in groups to do things so that they have to meet each other in groups and then I pop into their groups. So I feel like I always have that interaction with the students, but I would like to use something like this more um, just in feedback for um, for discussion boards and, and things like that. I think that having that is better because what I've done in the past is like record a video for joint feedback on something to kind of talk, you know, talk more to a discussion board for everyone. But then I look and they're not really watching it. So <laughs> um, so I don't know how to get past that. Well said. Nadia has sent a message. Nadia says she's repeating points that Nicole and Melody made. It's OK, Nadia. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all right. They're all good. Um, I have a question. Yes, sir. So I am teaching an asynchronous course in education. And I went into the app store to find, I know it was formerly Flipgrid. And so currently it is Flip. I, w I wasn't able to locate it. Yeah, the word Flip alone doesn't necessarily <laughs> have the right um, help you find it, but you, it's flipped by Microsoft. So okay, if you, okay. if you put, yeah, Microsoft's platform, it's, that should, that should help. But, but that's because I've, I've like when, when it comes to YouTube, I'll like put flip and it's like, it doesn't know what I'm talking about. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, but the, the Microsoft bit helps. Yeah. yeah but that, as long as you get, you get mm -hmm. to their website and I'm, I'm going to include, I'm uploading my, my PowerPoint right here that has all the links in there to, to the to the resources and the actual yeah, right. grade. Right. So but yeah it's once you get there you're you'll able to download it in. and I, I facilitate a lot of meetings in um the ISD in my other life. Okay, let's talk but, about that. Would will, will I be able to use Flip in some of those meetings with some some of the principals and some of the folks, the departments I support in the ISD, I'm just wondering. That is excellent. So this is what I want to spend the last six or seven minutes talking about Melanie and, and Nicole. Let's zero in on this. Staff and administrators, whether you're at VISD, VC, UHV, how can they use this to better have those group communications? I mean, Nicole, you, you're a scholar of group communication. You, you know this world. How does it help with those situations? Well, so what they provide here um, is a really a world of like opportunity so we don't have to reinvent the wheel i have um at the very like my last slide they have a getting started for educators and mm. but they also have these this, this discovery area where like if if one institution or school you know tried it for this thing like you can do the same thing that you don't have to like reinvent the wheel and figure out how to how to do it for example when i was thinking about like coming here it's it can be a instead of like asking people right here and now to come up with questions but if you have people like spend the week 
beforehand to record a question and to think about the topic, you might get more response and you might be able to engage those videos, and engage those issues when, when you have that time together. So, so that's an example of just you know, using Flip as this opportunity to create discussion that's, that you'll, you'll be able to, to use in, in a group or meeting context. But um, but let me see, is it sharing? Yeah, it's sharing. Okay, so um, there's the, yeah, the Get Inspired. I'm going to go there. Let me see. So while she's doing that, Melanie, talk directly, because we've got a VISD administrator right here, <laughs> one of our associate superintendents. Associate, assistant, 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 assistant superintendents. Yeah. And tell him what what he can do as he's trying to reach out to his principals, other uh, admins within VISD. How how he can use this tool? One thing that I think it might be really useful for um, is brainstorming on things. Um, if you are trying to, um, you know, uh, create new content for. Uh, courses or, or like you know create I, I i'm trying to think of different ways but like i could really see like you know sort of like here's what we're trying to um do what are your ideas on this i think uh, to me i think a lot of people are more willing to maybe share those um brainstorm off the top of their heads via video versus having to sit down and type out you know a long email or a, a amount of text um, and then they can watch each other's brainstorm on whatever the the topic is. I, I think it could be really useful for something like that. I was also thinking like showcasing, like principal at Dalyon is doing this, principal at Shield is doing this. Instead of just typing it, show it. Maybe they have testimonials. Maybe it's them with one of their teachers, yeah. with one of their students. Yeah. And it's like five minutes. And then maybe that gets an icebreaker going when you're trying to like, OK, guys. Right. Yeah. And I mind, oh, go ahead. what comes to mind also when we start out our monthly principals operational meetings or the regular principal PLC meetings, we like to start with celebrations. Mm. And so we could actually give principals an opportunity to Record. share with the group starting out via flip. Absolutely. Right. I was still going to share something on uh, my own um, children. They they go to KDISD. Um, we recently got short videos from the, both of their principals. Um, I, I assume you could record something like that and send it, uh, you know, send it out too. Um, just kind of like a, um, they're, they're, they have a bond uh, election coming up. And so each of the principals recorded like a little short video about why the bond initiative is important to them. So. Excellent. Yeah. And now I think about it, uh, I like the fact that there's that five minute limit on the flip videos mm -hmm. because it's kind of incentivizes the student right. to go through more videos. Right. Mm -hmm. But if it's like a 30 minute video, it's harder to go through. Yeah. If it's like two, three yeah. minutes, yeah. you can go through like five, seven of them. Yeah, you set up you set up the options when you set up the video so you can have them like give them a 30 second or two minute or five minute thing. We're getting to the end of our time. Um, again, you can follow up with Dr. Lemansky and Dr. Eugene, but I just want to give them a, a few moments to just last words. Before they offer their last words, I just want to read something that Dr. Penendrig wrote about giving students agency. That, that's such a great, great comment, Dr. Dr. Penendrig. Giving students agency, this sense of empowerment, that they're not just a drone and an online cog, right? That they're part of what's what's going on around them. And they get to speak their truth, like that young man we heard. We got to hear his truth. Now, we might not agree with his truth, or like, rah, 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 but that's him. That's where he's coming from. That's our students. I think we get this idea of like, we think what our students should be, and we have all these expectations, but that's what our students actually are. That's the raw student right there. and. What a great opportunity for agency. Dr. Lemansky, take us home and then I'll turn it over to Dr. Eugene. Yeah, I was going to add is that I did drop into the video, into the chat for this. I dropped the two handouts or um, I know um, uh, Woodrow can send those out as well. Um, I went ahead and uh, 
was able to quickly do one for uh, creating video assignments. So um, they are there for you to use. And um, I don't know. I, I like the word I, Nadia used. Uh, what was it? I, I agency. I call it connectedness. That's that's to me what is important in in doing these kinds of assignments is building that connectedness between you and the students and the students with each other. So. Well said, Dr. Lemansky. Thank you, Dr. Eugene. Get the last word. Make it good. No pressure. <laughs> well, I was just really happy to be able to share Flip with everybody. The last page of the PowerPoint it has links to a lot of resources to let you explore things on uh, Flip and in their whole world. Uh, because there is a lot more that we weren't able to to cover and to touch on here, but. But Flip has, uh, over, since I've come here, seven, uh, is it seven years ago, two years ago, um, they've, they've grown and they've really been able to, to, to meet a lot of different needs and have improved dramatically and are, are really about adding, adding value and have adding our ability to, to connect and, and support each other. So, so if you get a chance, you know, check out some of the, the links at the end. Um, if you're if you're curious about learning more, um, but thank you all for for coming. Well, thank you. And again, you can follow up with Nicole and Melanie. They are fantastic colleagues. I know when I first came here, I don't know where I'd be without Dr. Eugene. She was such a great mentor and help. And then getting to know Dr. Lemansky over the years, she's been so fantastic too. We've got some really great resources right here in our own backyard, right? And if we just leverage them more, then Man, I think we can be something special. I want to thank everybody for taking this time. You got a lot of things on your plate. You got a lot of things going on. I want to especially thank our Victoria College colleagues for coming over to this, our VISD colleagues. We'd like to see more of you. Tell your friends. And if you'd like us to go to VC specifically and do something, we'd do it. If you'd like us to come into VISD, we'll, we'll do it. But I think there's a lot of great resources here that can help the entire educational community beyond UHB. So thank y'all so much. Look out for more exciting invitations from me in your inbox soon. But I really, really appreciate your time. And come visit us on campus because we've got a whole plethora of snacks that will be uneaten that will go in the refrigerator. Or Danny might take them home, who knows? But thank y'all so much for joining us and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody online. <laughs> we were told to expect this exotic <laughs> lunch buffet. This is the lunch buffet. buffet. It's very <laughs> exotic. <laughs> and it did have flowers, which I hope you all appreciate. Thank you for coming. Thanks. Really appreciate it. Okay, absolutely. I don't want to. Dr. Eugene. Dr. Eugene, Eugene, thank you. You were so great. Thank you. Come on. Come on. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. It's all right. Here's your favorite. Yeah, we're following yeah, yeah. 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 out. Yeah, I hope you're yeah. busy. Yeah. 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 Nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. It's really a pleasure to come back. Thank you very much. Please come back. Yeah, we're from the Applied AI Lab. Excellent. Research staff there. Excellent. You know, I think very pro. We have a year after you. The last few years. Now, for the first time. I was a student at Main Campus. Okay. Then I was a student again in 2020. Oh, my gosh. So, because I. What a great term, psychological yeah, absolutely right. So, but I was wondering, I was like, how can I actually reach out to you somehow? Someone yeah. finds a way yeah. Yeah. to get a house. Get, we've got yeah. great teachers but like Dr. Eugene, Dr. Lansky, yeah. yeah. they're yeah. trying to get yeah. us out of the hole yeah. best they can. Yeah. Right. Right. So now coming to the staff at UHB, we offer UH main campus main students all the time experiencing both sides of the coin. Now when we interact with our students face to face and online and seeing UHB evolve yeah. from 
platform and right. you know because now we we have we we have to we we have to accommodate a lot of online presence also right. Right. Uh, just like our competitive absolutely you gotta stay competitive exactly well that's great for you because you've seen it from both sides exactly. so you can empathize with your students because it's like I've been there and I was there during the pandemic during the real rough <laughs> years so that's gonna give you some really great insights man are exactly. we glad to have you that's me here. Excellent. Come Thank back. You, yeah. Great you don't want to take some snacks for the road? Take some snacks <laughs> for the road. <laughs> you didn't have to offer twice. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got a group tutoring session. Oh my gosh. Okay. I've got to get out of here. Dr. You can fix it again. Really appreciate it. Let's pack up my snacks. Please take some things. So, um, take some things for Dr. Shepard. <laughs> you know, so. Where am I taking the bottle? Oh, Yes, I do. I'm gonna pack up my snacks and we'll go to chat. <laughs> yeah, Danny, I'm gonna hang up. Right, you don't need this. Okay. okay. It's a They need stuff. Okay. But thanks, white. Well, again, thanks so much, Dr. Eugene. I will be reaching out, ma'am. Great. Eager to learn more. Please.